From the moment you become born again, Satan and his agents begin to keep their eyes on you. They monitor you day and night, looking for every way possible to bring you down. Remember that when Satan fell from heaven, he didn't fall alone. He fell with one-third of heaven's angels. This means not only do you have a large number of fallen principalities fighting against you, but you also have dark forces raging war against you. But you might ask, what have you done that makes them hate you so much even though you've not done anything wrong? That is a good question, and the answer is quite simple. The reason they hate you so much is because you are God's chosen one. The first thing you need to understand is the fact that the battle you are facing on a daily basis truly has nothing to do with you. It is all about God. Satan knows that God loves you too much, and the only way for him to touch God indirectly is by attacking the one he loves. The Bible tells us we are the apple of God's eyes. This means if Satan cannot get a hold of God directly, he will try to get a hold of the one he loves. Satan knows that it is because of you that God became a man to die for you. He knows it is because of you that God had to endure shame on the cross just so you can be saved. Satan knows it is because of you that God had to condescend to a human form. Satan also knows it is because of you that Jesus had to be nailed to the cross. And so since he knows that God can do anything for the sake of his children, he does everything possible to attack them. This is why you face spiritual battles. In fact, you will always face this battle till the day you leave this world. But here is something else you need to know. Even though Satan hates you with passion, he and his agents know they cannot easily kill you. In fact, he has tried so many times in different ways and forms to get rid of you. But it has always proven difficult. Your presence and impact restricts a lot of attacks the enemy throws, and so the best way to carry on with their attacks is by trying to remove anyone who is blocking their way. The simple prayers you make cause a lot of havoc to their kingdom. But because God loves you too much, He protects you even without you knowing. He doesn't want you to live in fear or be distracted. And that is why he doesn't bother showing you all the details of the type of battles going on behind the scenes. Every day you go out and come back in, you might often think it's because you were just being careful. But it truly has nothing to do with how careful you have been. It is simply because of the grace of God and divine security God places around you. If God did not place this type of security around you, you would never have lived to see another day. In fact, David confirmed this in the book of Psalm 124, verses 1 to 3. He said, If it had not been the Lord who was on our side when people rose up against us, then they would have swallowed us alive when their anger was kindled against us. But the good news is that even though you are on Satan's target list, he cannot touch you because of the amount of security that covers you everywhere you go. But you might ask, how does Satan and his agents get to know when you are born again? The answer is very simple through the light of God shining from you. When you become saved, you move from darkness to light. The Spirit of Christ in you becomes a shining light that radiates even when you don't see it. So when you are walking around your neighborhood, there is a powerful light radiating from your spirit. This is the light the spirit realm sees and can identify who you are. For those living in darkness and not born again, the Bible refers to them as spiritually dead, and so they do not radiate any light. But for those who are saved and have Christ in them, this light shines in darkness and darkness cannot overcome it. So as soon as you become born again, Jesus Christ puts on that light in you. The Bible confirms this in the book of John chapter 1 verse 9. It says, That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. The verb lighteth means to give light or to illuminate. This light cannot be hidden. As long as you continue to shine that light, the enemy will always know who you are. In the book of Matthew chapter 5 verses 14 to 16, Jesus also said, You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. So Jesus himself confirmed that you are a light. Also in Philippians 2 verse 15, the Bible also tells us that we should be blameless and innocent, children of God without blemish in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world. Notice that it constantly refers to you as light. The more you walk in righteousness, the brighter that light will keep shining. If you start living in sin, the light will begin to get dimmer until it goes off. But apart from the light of God that shines in you, 
you also have the seal of God's Spirit. When the enemy looks at you, he sees a seal of protection around you. In Ephesians chapter 1 verses 13 to 14, the Bible says, In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. This means there is a security seal around you that tells the devil not to touch you. Even though you might not know it or see it, there is a lot of security around you. And this supernatural protection is what Satan and his agents try to break through, which can be very hard. In the book of Job chapter 1 verses 9 to 11, notice what Satan said. He said to God, Does Job fear God for no reason? Have you not put a hedge around him and his house and all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands, and his possessions have increased in the land. Notice that Satan specifically said, God has built a hedge around Job and all he has. Job, on the other hand, probably wasn't aware of the type of security he had. People might have seen him as just an ordinary man, but the spirit realm saw him differently. This is also the type of security you carry around you on a daily basis. When you get into your car and are driving to work, there are angels that accompany you. Not only does God fill you with his Holy Spirit, but he also baptizes you with fire. John the Baptist said in Matthew 3 verse 1, I baptize you with water for repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. This means from the moment you become born again, you become covered by the fire of God. This fire of God remains burning as long as you abide in Christ. The more you abide in Christ, the more fire-branded of a believer you become. At this stage, the devil cannot mess with you in any way. When you get into your house and are about to go to bed, the fire of God surrounds your house. As long as this fire keeps burning, there is no force of darkness that can penetrate. They can attack all they want, but not a single arrow of theirs will touch you. It's unfortunate that many believers don't know how much God has invested in protecting them. They live casually and even complain. But for a person who knows who they are, God continues to show them His grace. The devil does not see you as a human being sees you. On the surface, others see you as ordinary, but in the spirit realm, Satan and his agents see you as a firebrand. They can't come near you or touch you. You are covered by so much security, so much power, so much fire than you can imagine. My prayer for you is that God continues to keep you burning and shining in this generation. God bless you. Thank you for watching. If you love our videos, please feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel.